Welcome back. You're listening to the discussion, Modern Government, Space Training and Readiness Command, sponsored by KPMG on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guests today are Major General Sean Bratton, Commander of the Space Training and Readiness Command for the U.S. Space Force, and Chief Master Sergeant James Sabias, Senior Enlisted Leader of the Space Training and Readiness Command, also with the U.S. Space Force. Now, gentlemen, before break, we, we were talking about this idea of, of training and the training range. And uh, Chief Sabias, you talked about culture, and that's where I want to go next. I think that's so important when you're talking about a new organization and understanding what that new organization is trying to do and, and the goals around it. And recently, the Space Force held a boot camp at Joint Base San Antonio. Give me a little bit of background about that boot camp and then maybe how it's setting that tone for, the, for current and future training efforts. Yeah, absolutely, Jason. So, yeah, we, we did... Uh, we launched our first uh, iteration of Space Force specific Guardian only basic training. Um, and they, they graduated in June after seven and a half weeks. So the time frame is, is, is just as long as the Air Force. But prior to that, um, our basic training had been uh, ingrained with the Air Force. And so our Guardians were coming in, um, mixed in with Air Force flights, uh, learning a little bit about Air Force culture and Air you know, learning the Air Force song and all those sorts of things. And so uh, when we launched our first iteration of, of, of Space Force basic training, uh, it was Guardian only, uh, pushed by Guardian military training instructors uh, in a dedicated space on Lackland Air Force Base that was specifically just for the Space Force. And so uh, that was significant for, for multiple reasons, um, the, the biggest of which was identity, right? Uh, one of the feedback uh, some of the feedback, excuse me, that we had heard from guardians that went through previously was that they, they felt like airmen. Um, and part of that was because they, they were integrated, uh, but uh, an, another part of that was um, the, the uniforms, right? And so earlier this year, uh, the Space Force launched uh, new enlisted insignia um, for, for both our, our, our battle uniform as well as our, our dress blues. And so the guardians not, not only get to wear those stripes, um, they, they get to wear the uniform, um, and then even uh, PT gear was designated as specific colors, and now they, they wear that. And so when our guardians now go to basic training, now they have a specific identity. They're pushed by guardians. Uh, when they have questions about what they will be doing in the future, what it's like, uh, they get that directly right from a guardian. And so uh, it, was, it was pretty significant. The curriculum uh, wasn't completely revamped, but it was significantly changed. We added about 35 hours of Space Force specific curriculum uh, that got after um, the different things that we prioritize in, in the Space Force, our core values, um, you know, a better understanding of which each of the uh, different specialties bring uh, to the fight, uh, to include them even getting uh, a threat brace from, from operational folks uh, here at Starcom. And so uh, pretty significant milestone. Uh, they're right in the middle of the second iteration right now. Um, and so we, we hope to see some qualitative uh, you know, feedback from that. But we, we definitely know that that's going to pay a, a direct uh, contribution to building that culture uh, that we're trying to set in Space Force. It, it's Jason, it's funny. We, we Chief and I talk about this all the time and, and we've been out and talked to the Marine Corps. We've talked to um, organizations who we think do this well. And we've had some great help come in uh, as we talk, as we think about what does it mean for the Space Force, this idea of identity how do you make someone feel like a guardian, even after they've left the force? You know, we, we all have probably have seen, you know, someone who's done a one term in the Marine Corps and then 60 years later, they're still flying the Marine Corps flag and they got a sticker on the back of their car. You know, what is it that makes them makes them do that? Um, I, I have a good friend who went to Texas A&M and spent four years there. And if you've ever met someone from Texas A&M, you know how passionately they feel about that institution but how they also stay very involved and they're, they're very connected. And so somewhere, it, you know, these organizations that do this well in, in a small number of years are able to really um, give that sense of identity and belonging to the organization. And, and there's a lot of things that they do and, and we're trying to absolutely incorporate those into the Space Force um, in healthy ways so that people feel a strong connection to the force, uh, that they're, they're part of an organization that is bigger than any one of us for sure. And then we want that sense of belonging to continue, you know, even if they make a choice to leave the service and go out to industry, we still want to, hey, you, you know, you're still a guardian, you're still part of the team. Um, and, and so how we make that connection, time, time will tell if we're successful, but, you know, basic training is absolutely one place where we're just trying to set that right off the start, that, that good, found, strong foundation. 
All right, here's the hardest question in the interview. Uh, I'm going to give this to the chief. You mentioned the Air Force has a song. Does the Space Force have a song? <laughs> so we, we have an interim song. Uh, an interim this, song. This still, decision has not been made uh, just yet. The interim song is called Invincible Eagle. Uh, we play it in, in our formations and ceremonies and things like that. But it, it is uh, and a final decision has not yet been made. It's coming. I will, not put, I will not put you on the spot and ask you to sing a few bars. But... I will hold that in my back pocket if we somehow run out of things to talk about. Fair enough? I appreciate that. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I, I, was, I want, uh, one of the things you did talk about is building, um, is, is listening to some of the feedback. And I think that's so important when you talk about training and education is not just thinking you know everything, but listening to the people who are getting that education, who are getting that training. How do you incorporate that user-centered design, that human feedback into uh, the, the continued evolution of, of space and training command. The um, that's a tough one. You better answer. Okay. You better answer that one. Yeah. So uh, I, I think for for me, uh, the place to start to answer that question is you know looking at training holistically, right? We we want to evolve training differently. What does that mean? Uh, when, when you look at the other services, um, just when you compare sheer numbers, and again, I'll use the enlisted numbers because I know them pretty intimately. Um, the Army, as an example, recruits about 120,000 soldiers a year into basic training. Um, so then they, in turn, have to kick out that many to their, their tech schools. Um, we are recruiting 500 enlisted. And so when you look at that, uh, that enables you to do training differently. You, you're, you're not then creating a widget. You're not kicking out just, you know, it's, it's not an industrial model uh, approach to, to training and education and development. And so because of that, uh, we can do things a little bit differently. We can make them a little bit more tailored and then we can change uh, a little bit more fluidly. And so uh, by, by doing that, we can definitely incorporate the feedback. We, we already do it in, in certain instances with regards to, um, with, with regards to training. And so we, we plan to kind of spread that across the board. Uh, again, as we evolve training, it is a work in progress. Um, and, but that, that I think is going to be one of the things where, you know, we really, we really, uh, do things differently. Uh, the other thing just in general that we, we're trying to emphasize, and this is to, to all guardians, officer enlisted and civilian, is that in the Space Force, we want every guardian to have a voice. Um, the boss and I, when we're on the road or when we're at, you know, in any kind of form that makes that makes sense, we tell people, hey, if you ever have anything, please, you know, shoot us an email. And and it's it's not just platitudes. We mean that with sincerity. And because of our size, if we do get some of the feedback, we have the ability from our, our positions to actually influence some of that change. Um, but it, it's not hard to do that because everybody is really on board with trying to get after this. And that's just one of the ways that we're trying to do that and incorporate the guardian and the student uh, and their input and to try and make it the best experience that they can possibly have. Yeah, we had, Chief and I were down at, at basic training talking to those um, young guardians before they graduated. And, and one of them asked, uh, just the, the best question that I can ask is, hey, what are you gonna do to retain me? You know, why, what makes, why should I stay in the Space Force now? I'm like, hey, you're only, you're only six weeks in, you know, let's try it out. But it was a great question. And, and we have to deliver on kind of our piece of the contract and that these ideas of, hey, we, you know, this is, this is about service to your country. Absolutely. Um, but we want to make you a better person while we're on that journey to serve the country together and to be able to, you know, be ready for competition and conflict. I, and we're going to deliver that to you in training and education from Starcom. You're going to gain experiences, you know, in the operations command. You're going to gain, um, you know, wisdom and experience. Certainly, if you're working in the acquisition command, that that is valued in other places. But the, the idea of continuous learning, continuous education, we're really trying to incorporate this. It's not just basic training and initial skills, and then you're off to the races. We need to deliver more and more advanced training opportunities for advanced degrees and continue to kind of grow our force as they um, as they grow in experience in their time with us. We've covered a lot of ground in our conversation and, and we're, we're running up against the clock here. So I definitely don't wanna uh, miss out on this idea of the evolution. You guys are about a year into it. You, you, you continually, as you said, uh, evolved, continually progressed in terms of how you think about training. What are some of those areas you are looking at next? Where, uh, I'll ask, what have you done for me lately, right? Where are you going over the next six or nine months, a year from now? Uh, 
things like electronic warfare, are there pl there's a planned exercise later this year, next around things like that. Is there anything you can give us on those in those areas? Yeah, I, I'll give you one. So we, we certainly spent uh, uh, quite a bit of time, like we talked about, just delivering basic training in the first year. I think you'll you will see not completely, but a little of our attention shift to the more advanced training venues. And you mentioned the electronic warfare exercise. So we're going to have a series of exercises. We call it the skies series. So black skies, red skies, blue skies. Uh, black skies is an electronic warfare exercise. Uh, we're going to, some of that will be a, what we call live fire. So we use actual systems and operators, but to really put them through their paces in a more advanced training environment. Um, and then we owe that to our cyber operators and our orbital warfare operators. The intelligence is incorporated in all of these exercises, but really bringing the team together, not in the, in the fundamentals, but you know, up in our game a little bit and presenting them with a more difficult challenge. And we'll do that uh, through the Sky Series next year, and then we'll follow with the others in subsequent years. Um, that, that's certainly one of the key areas, areas that we're gonna focus on in our, in our second year as Starcom. Um, Chief, what's a what's another thing? Um, yeah, so I, we, we've we've started with a, a, a few pathfinders uh, on, on different initiatives. Some have just been in conversation. Uh, some have been executed. As General Bratton touched on, uh, you know, we we are looking at, at advanced degrees or degrees and advanced degrees for our enlisted force, all all in the name of professional development. We're not just trying to you know get people. Um, you know, to check boxes and have things underneath the resume. We actually want to put whatever it is we develop them with uh, to use. And so uh, going into year two, uh, you know, the plan is obviously to kind of, you know, look at some other op opportunities there uh, to either partner with institutions and, 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 uh, and continue with that, that, um, that toolbox, if you will, of, of professional development opportunities are. Uh, another thing that, that we're moving towards is, uh, you know, we still rely pretty heavily on the Air Force for, for a lot of things, and, and we will uh, into perpetuity. Uh, one of the areas uh, in training uh, is the tech schools. Um, the tech training, uh, we, we own one of the schoolhouses, uh, but the, 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 the main other two for cyber and intel are owned by the Air Force. And so last, um, gosh, it's, it's two months now, I was gonna say last month, but it was actually in June, uh, we stood up a detachment at Goodfellow Air Force Base in San Angelo, Texas, uh, for the Intel uh, uh, Tech School, uh, it'll be uh, it'll it'll start off with about five folks. Uh, we put, we hope to grow that, um, and then we're hoping this fall we're able to do the same at Keyser Air Force Base uh, out in Mississippi. And so, um, you know, part of year two is is getting getting their footing underneath them and figuring out what it is they need to do to develop and and create space curriculum. Um, acculturation is going to be a huge part of why they're there as well. Uh, so that our guardians that are going through those trainings again our numbers are so small we don't want them to kind of be uh, left out on their own um, and so those are just a couple of the aspects that we're looking uh, to evolve and then you know where it makes sense from a um, and we don't own policy at the starcom level but the the, the, the programs that we do own uh, start to create some sort of um, kind of stepping stone for folks to kind of build on right when you're creating a lot of new things um, there's a bit of uncertainty because there's nothing you can repeat. There's no program. There's nothing codified. And so as we go through year two, that'll be, uh, you know, another goal of ours to kind of create some routine that we can build on um, and then continue to go uh, down the path of uh, evolving and innovating new things. I've learned so much from our conversation today. Unfortunately, we're out of time and your plate is full. So we will definitely come back and, and ask you more about it in the coming uh, weeks, months and years. Well, first, let me thank my guests. Major General Sean Bratton is the commander of the Space Training and Readiness Command for the U.S. Space Force. General Bratton, thank you so much for taking the time today. Hey, Jason, thanks to you and uh, anyone listening, really appreciate it. Our pleasure. And Chief Master Sergeant James Tobias is the senior enlisted leader of the Space Training and Readiness Command at the U.S. Space Force as well. Chief Master Sergeant Tobias, thank you as well. Yeah, Jason, thank you so much. Hopefully uh, this was beneficial for you and, and anyone who listens. Definitely, we all learned a lot. Uh, I'm Jason Miller, and you've been listening to the discussion, Modern Government, Space Training and Readiness Command, sponsored by KPMG on Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search K